Now it says it is. There we go. All right, I want to go over and post over to all the discords and stuff, and then I'll be right back. And then we'll go live. I mean, we're already live, but we'll start the show. Uh, let's see. Where did it go? Are you watching the stream? Yeah. Okay, you need to mute it because there's a delay and I can hear it. Okay. So I'm you can fine. watch it. You can watch it, but mute it. No, I'm just letting you know. So you ready? Yo, are you ready? Yes, I was giving you a thumbs up because, oh, I, wasn't looking because at the I knew screen. you wanted me to be quiet. Yeah, well, I wasn't looking at the screen, so hold on. I got to get Chase up here. Yeah. I got to check him on this. All right. So when the music stops, the other one starts. Oh God, here we go again. And I can't stop it. So we're gonna just let that just do what it's doing and start over. Meanwhile, I'm gonna go get a drink. So I'm just gonna start that over. I'll be right back. All right, got your beat. Oh my gosh. Crazy, crazy. Yeah, we're just gonna do that. Can you hear me? Yeah. It's over. I will start it back up.
All right, let's start, let me start that music back up, and I'll be right back. All right, let's try that again. How about it? All right. Boy, that is taking a long time for music to start. Why is it not starting? What the crap is going on? Uh, see, now I gotta restart everything. My audio engine. I don't know what's going on. It was going great until right there at the end. So. I don't know why our music's not working, but I am going to figure it out. You, you dang well better. Because you need something to dance to. Exactly. Yeah, I know. I mean, Dad, dancing is my whole persona in this thing. I know. I know. So. Beep. Pinch. Pinch the head. I'm pinching the head. Okay, stop pinching the head. I'm trying to fix this. <laughs> I just realized how bad that sounds. <laughs> See, the the regular music happens, but our music sure doesn't music not happen. Yeah, the sound effects aren't happening. <laughs> Weird. Unbelievable. All right, hold on one sec. I'm going to start that over. There. I don't know what's going on. Why it's taking so long to load. All right. We're going to get this fixed in just a second, people. I don't know if anybody's here, okay. but, you know, just hold that on. For there we go. Here. Is it doubling up? Not yet. <laughs> And there we are. Where's... Oh, and it's doing it again. What in the world is going on? You're doing what? I'm not, I'm not hearing a double pull up. I'm hearing a double. It's what? It's cutting in and out again on my end. Are we having so much trouble today? We always have so much trouble with audio. All right, we're gonna get this fixed in just a minute, I promise. As soon as that music stops, I wanna press the button and just let it sit. Sorry, I'm trying. Hey, Dad, can you Give hear me? Give me a minute, I'm working on it. Dad, can you hear me? Dad, can you hear me? All right, now, you can hear me, right? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. 
Okay, well, I asked that several times and you said nothing. Because I had it muted. I had it muted. Okay, and so that's working. But our sound effects aren't working, or there's a huge delay. So. Yeah. Oh, what's oh, up there, Stealth Gang? Yeah, the, hey, this dude. This guy followed me the other day. This guy followed me the, the other day cool. while I was playing hang on, so Skyrim. He's, he's a cool dude. Yeah. What's up, dude? Yeah, he's in, he's in our Discord chat in Legion of oh, Dorks. Oh, cool. Yeah. So, for some reason, our music is not playing, and I don't know why, but it's pissing me off. So, bad, I am going to go and just try to manually play it. All right. And see if that works, because the touchpad stuff ain't work. I got to get me a stream deck, man. I just got to get me a stream deck. I mean, I mean, with me not there, there you you, you must be saving a fortune on food bills, you know. So. Yeah, well, that's true. So, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Stealth. Uh, we're having audio troubles as usual. Uh, for some reason, our <laughs> uh, audio doesn't want to play from the uh, touch portal. And so I'm going to try that. I'm going to reset our audio and try that again. Yeah. <sighs> and then... And um, and and so yeah, yeah, stealth. Um, um, we we've been doing this thing for a long, long time. So um, but but it's good that you're getting on now after it's kind of fleshed out and everything. Otherwise, it's uh, it was kind of rough in the beginning. Although I'm pretty sure, and I'm pretty sure my dad can attest to that. But I'm pretty sure he muted me so that I'm pretty sure he muted me. No, I have not muted you. I'm busy. Oh. <laughs> I'm busy. You keep talking while I try to fix our errors here we're having. You need to be better at multitasking, Dad. I can barely chew gum and walk, dude. Relax. So. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, I'm anyway. I'm to a podcast with, te- it, with technical difficulties. Yeah. At least, yes. That's basically the entire thing with our podcast. It's all te- It's all te- yeah. It's pretty much technical difficulties. Yeah, I've had go. too much to drink. You haven't had enough to drink. So uh, you have you um you don't know how long I've been drinking. I'm just trying to find my stinking files. Oh, there you go. I heard that. God, <laughs> how'd you hear that? Cause it was right there, man. What do you mean? <laughs> no, it couldn't. It was all. Oh my god! Now I'm embarrassed. Good. You should be. I didn't know the mic was that sensitive. Please, please cut that out when you post this. Oh, uh, no, it's going live, man. <laughs> yep. Yeah, but when you post this later, cut it. Okay, and that's not playing. There we go. There's our music. Can you hear it? Yep. All right. So we're just going to just do it manually for now because Touch Portal is just not wanting to work. I got to get me a stream deck. If anybody wants to donate a stream deck, I'll be happy to take one. Man, we're getting a lot of frames dropped. I don't know what's going on, man. I need to figure out what's going on. Um, yeah, I know. It is delayed, and I don't know what's going on with that. Um, we've had problems with dropped frames for the last two uh, podcasts. I mean, I, I'm looking at it on the screen, and it looks horrible. Um, so I'm not sure what to do to fix that. Um, we are. I have good Wi-Fi. I have good connection. Um, so I'm not sure what's going on with, um, with the dropped frames. So anyway, uh, hi everybody. I'm Sean. Welcome Uh, to the Gene Pool podcast. Yeah, we're, we're all over the place today. So yeah, welcome to the Gene Pool Variety Hour. And, uh, uh, my name is Sean. I am the dad, the old guy of the group. And, uh, this guy over here is, is what's your name? I don't know. And um, and my name is Connor, the giant walking billboard of the group. Yeah, well, I didn't wear them. I didn't wear mine today. I just went. I just went on air. So anyway, um, 
we've been doing this for off and on for a couple of years now. We're trying to get more consistent oh, yeah. with it, and uh, we're but just life. You know, life gets in the way. Yeah, you know, we're life just... uh, uh, finds a way to screw us up. Okay, you know, whatever you say. Oh. So anyway, um, I had to do the reference. <laughs> I don't even know what the reference. Oh, by the way, there's Chase Jurassic Park. There's Chase. Jurassic I'm Park, Chad. The him. very first Jurassic Park movie. Come on. Okay, I'm trying to Come get on. Chase so he can be seen. So anyway, um, so yeah, we're, we're just a geek podcast. Uh, that's all we do. We do. Um, uh, we talk about video games. We talk about movies. We whatever. We talk but, about books, superheroes. Well, basically anything in the geek realm of possibility. And, and we, uh, talk, we speak of it. I don't like talking about stuff that I'm not an expert at, or at least have some knowledge about. So. Um, I try to avoid some of those, but uh, but anyway, so we usually try to um, just review a random movie. We pick a random movie uh, each episode to, re- to review, either from Netflix or Amazon, one of the streaming services. Uh, we usually have a geek question that we talk about and then just kind of chase chickens as we go. Speaking of chickens, I want to see if that works. No. Yeah. Touch portal's pissing me mark. off, man. No, they're about to get a bad review because it keeps. It's been doing this for the last several. I don't know, however long. Um, then, but any from now on, just do it manually. What's that? No, you know just what? Just do it manually from now on. I, I, to be honest, see, it's golly, I'm I'm getting really angry. I'm watching the stream over here, and it just keeps dropping and, and everything. So I don't know if there's a way for me to reduce the quality. I don't know, but the. Somebody help me. I mean, Connor just gets to be the, the, the eye candy and the talent. He just shows up and does the job and leaves, and I have to do all the behind-the-scenes work. So I get to deal with all the frustration. And he oh, just you kinda, know I'm all the candy sugar. I'm not going to go there, man. <laughs> that's, that's between you and Nikki. So anyway. Um, so Oh, yes, Nikki, my fairly there's, betrothed. We've had a lot happen since the last time uh, we were on. A lot. We were supposed to be, uh, we're supposed to have done this last Friday, and we had to push it a week. And so because of that, I guess one silver lining from all this is that we've decided to try to do this weekly because we're going to miss times anyway, so might as well try to do it weekly so we can at least kind of maybe yeah. end up on a bi-weekly basis. Yeah. So um, you guys will be seeing our ugly mugs a lot more frequently. But... Since the last time we've had, maybe your mug is ugly, but this thing is carved from street and marble. It's carved from something. It's carved from a big hey. pumpkin head. But, hey, but, but I am anyway. not a pumpkin head. <laughs> so I not, anyway, I am not a pumpkin head. All right. Um. Something what? off. Something off camera. Yeah, sorry. Okay. So anyway, um Yeah, some kind of flash um outside outside my window. Yeah, right. hmm Anyway. What? Uh, nothing. So Okay. <laughs> anyway, so So what, since has been, the la- what has been new? Uh well, we've been living the quarantine life down here in Georgia because oh, your mom yeah, cause you got some bad I, stuff well, happening. Well Well, yeah, so all during the summer, we were having to kind of dance around the whole COVID thing because your brother, your younger brother, who's in college, was uh, doing some CNA work and working at a nursing home with a bunch of COVID. And we had to kind of dance around that and keep from getting it. Well, we did, and he didn't get it. I do get, remember that. Yeah, he didn't get it. We didn't get it. We, we did really good. And then he went back to college. And within two weeks, he got COVID. And yeah. so <laughs> then your mom and I were really testing and, and word that we were going to get it. education doesn't help anyone no just i know it's, go by the seat of your pants you know n- no no that's not true but college students aren't always the smartest people either so they're just not careful so, so he got right. it he got it your mom and i had to be careful about not getting it again and we didn't but then apparently we've had it get into our church and she got it Two weeks ago, she started showing signs that lo- you, you, about you, you, ten you days got ago it at church. Yeah, so well, I I didn't get it at church. I was out of town. Remember, I was out of town for work. So anyway, let me finish. Um, so she started showing symptoms, and she went and got tested last week, and found out last Friday that she tested positive. So we've been quarantining in the house since then. She's been quarantining upstairs. I've been quarantining downstairs to try to keep from getting it. I got my test results back yeah. today. I'm negative. But 
It's it's hitting mom. Um, she's been going on nine days now with still having a fever. So it's not huge yeah, fever, bad. but it's just it's not getting worse. It's just kind of plateauing and not getting better yet either. So uh, we've just been kind of in standard, you know, in like suspended animation for for a yeah. while. So that's what's been going on here. That's what delayed us a bit because um, we just found out last Friday that she tested positive. It kind of threw the house for a loop. So that's what, that's why we delayed last week. Um, yeah. So that's what's been going on here. Um, other things have been going on with me this Wednesday, this past Wednesday, just a couple of days ago. I guest hosted on Staring at Goats with, with Stephen and, and Jacob. You know, with Legion of Dorks, which so was that very was cool. cool. That was cool. So I got to do that, and, and no one reached out to me. I'm and sad. I got, I got, you know, I, I got a good review from from Stephen's mom. He, she listened to it and she said, "I like that guy's voice." So that was kind of cool. So I said she just she just recognizes old people. That's all. So so, so you got the mom votes. Very good, Dad. Very uh, good. I'm I'll so always, proud of you. I always get the always get the, the I always get the mom vote. I always get the older woman vote. So anyway, <laughs> so that's what's been going on here. I hopefully will be getting to go back to 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 work on base here soon. But as long as Mom still has a fever, I'm still quarantined to, just to keep from bringing it down there to them. So that's what's been going on sure? here. I've been sitting on the couch a lot, doing a lot of work on the computer, trying to do therapy with people over the computer, which has been kind of tough, and playing a lot of Destiny. Of of course, that's what you're playing. You're I, not playing the new DLC, are you? The new deal? Oh, for for Borderlands, man. I've kind of yes, Buster I, Cluck. I kind of I kind of lost you're, interest. I, to be honest with you, I kind of lost interest in Borderlands, and this you're, is. I know this is, and this is why. This is why, because I told you from day one. Remember, I told you from day one that it didn't feel like border. It didn't feel like the old Borderlands to me. the 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 graphics looked different. The humor was kind of different. It just, of course, it was a different development studio, right? So that's probably why. But the it just didn't look like Borderlands to me. And I just, I don't know. I kind of lost interest. I'll get back to it, just like I did because Borderlands Two. I lost interest and got away from it for a year, and then got back into it and. Max out two or three characters, so it'll happen. Just one character, you you, you max out one character. You're Micromancer. That's I did Micromancer oh. and somebody else too. I think I can't remember who though. No, I I main the, Micromancer the only, for a long the, time. The only other the only other character I think I've, I've ever seen you play was Zero, the assassin. Yeah, I maxed him out, but I just didn't like him as much. So anyway, so I'll get back to Borderlands Three, but I'm just right now. Excuse me, my thing. See, mm. mine's just a burp, so at least there's that. But, <laughs> but my thing with Destiny right now is, I want to try to get the triumph for completing this season, all the 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 triumphs of this season, and so I've got two more to do. What and, is Rainbow Six Siege? Uh, it's 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 Rainbow it's, Six. It's it's it's, a, it's something that a that a Stephen put. That, yeah, that put I, I I I'm. I've played Rainbow Six Siege. Um, I have not played it in probably, good grief, over a year. Um, so I would have to relearn how to play it. I would have to catch up on all the all my operators that I didn't keep up to date on. Um, and, you know, unless... It got to the point where unless you're doing, like, terrorist hunt type stuff um, or you're playing private rooms with just friends... <laughs> Man, the the multiplayer in Rainbow Six Siege, which is pretty much all Rainbow Six Siege is, is just super toxic. Uh, just a bunch of nastiness for most people. And so, you know, when a buddy, it? when a buddy of mine that I play Destiny with, his daughter, who is she's probably thirteen now, uh, but I've known them for years, and she's schooling people in Rainbow Six, and they're calling her all kinds of nasty names. You know, and she's a 13-year-old girl. I'm like, eh, I just, I, I don't, whereas Destiny, it's not like that. I've never had that problem with Destiny. So that's why I kind of stick with that that group, because it seems to be a better environment. But anyway. Excuse me. So I, I really want to do that. So after you and I are done tonight, I'm probably going to hop on Destiny with, with Mitch and Brandon. We're going to try to run a dungeon and, and do that. So that's kind of what's been going on with me. Um, quarantine life. I've gotten back. Netflix and Destiny. So go ahead. What's been up with you? Um, well, let's see. Um, as um, as you can see, but um, 
by this fancy accessory, um, um, I've been enjoying, quote unquote, my new job at at the uh, Honda plant locally here. Okay. Um, um, it's it's tedious. It's busy work, mm-hmm. but but it makes the time go by fast, you know. Mm-hmm. So and and I earn a decent pay, but it's killer on my hand. Like, mm-hmm. like I mean, you know, I um, I wake up at night from the pain in my hand. Yeah, yeah, oh, it's crazy. Well, you know, um, let's see. Well, I mean, bef- the job you had before, you were carrying stuff, but you want to do a lot of work. not not a lot of actual work with your hand. So it's just you're using muscles that you haven't used before and, and tendons that you haven't used before. And it's going to take a while to get used but to that. But that's the thing. Hang on. It's um, it's this muscle that's uh, that's hurting the most, which is which is called the gamer muscle because it controls the thumb. Yeah, but but if you're gripping, you, say, but with, with a controller, the grip, yeah, with, with a controller, you're using that muscle, but you're not gripping. With the job you have now, you're doing a lot of tight gripping, so it's really putting a strain on that muscle, you know. So that's what's going on. So, so Makes anyway, sense. so that's cool. And hopefully, in the next two weeks, I'll be driving up there with a van full of your furniture, so you can actually have furniture in your place. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, but you know, this whole COVID thing is kind of maybe putting a wrench in all that. Shit. <laughs> okay, um, you could say stuff, but you know, fam- we try to be family I'm friendly. Sorry, that honestly slipped out. <laughs> Stop gripping so hard. <laughs> That could turn really bad really quick. Stealth. Just Remember, saying. the grip is supposed to be very, very nice and loose, not tight. I'm just saying, Dad. Uh, d- get just, off the stream. Uh, go, just... go, go, <laughs> go. Oh, this is my show now. Okay, guys, let's talk about so let's video talk. Games. So what? What do we want to talk about today? Um, let's see. I've gotten back into Assassin's Creed. Okay. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm I've seen that. The, um, I'm playing from the very beginning. From from two on, I do not want to play one uh, from one of experience with 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 the first Mass Effect game and Borderlands one. The sequels are always better because because they glitch out all the bugs and and stuff that were they were in the first ones. You first know? one was the only one I really liked because it was the first one. After that, it got to be okay. There's Assassin's Creed in another place doing the exact same thing over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Um um, but the thing is. Um, so, so, so I'm playing the Ezio collection, you know, which is two or Brotherhood and Revelations. <laughs> I'm just looking at Stale's comments over there. <laughs> you might want to add a twisting motion with that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so okay, kind so of you're playing with a wrench, but whatever. Um, but uh, but that, that would that would actually is, make it it's, interesting. Um, um, so 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 I tried to play assassin's creed 2 and for some reason my game is glitching out in like one of the very first missions when you get the when you get the hidden blade from 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 leonardo da vinci you know yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Um, um he hands it to you you put it on and um and then you're supposed to, you're supposed to activate the weapon wheel and select it to kind of activate the next part of the scene yeah yeah it doesn't do that okay it, um, I, it's it's just stuck at that scene, you know. I, um, and and then I can continuously turn turn on the weapon wheel and and choose hidden blade or fist, hidden blade or fist. You know, um, I've tried restarting it. I've tried exiting out of the game, quitting, uh-huh, uh-huh. restarting the entire console. But basically, I cannot get past that scene. It's basically a forever frozen picture of of Ezio's mop head swaying in the slight breeze of the workshop. I'm look, looking at this bracer crap, you know, uh-huh. and just I can't, I couldn't get past it, no matter what I did. It was stuck right. at that scene. You know, I would try restarting the memory, and it just kept happening. So, right. so I'm, so I'm like, screw it, I'll just go on to the next game, Brotherhood, which, which honestly I much rather preferred because I got to recruit people to fight with me, which uh-huh. was an amazing feeling. Cool. Yeah. I kind of rambled on there. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, that's that's okay. That's kind of what we do around here. So um, I'm just looking at some stuff here. So okay, well, here's the thing: we need to talk about a movie, and we need to talk about a geek question. Now, here's something that we've talked about doing, and um, I'll, I'll just mention this, and then we'll we'll move on to whatever you want to do. Sure. But we use, there's something that we used to do early in the early days of the of the of the podcast when it was just a podcast called. Uh, uh, multiverse mayhem or something like that. I forgot what we called it. 
where it basically took people. Brothers and sisters to the multiverse mayhem showdown. Yeah, that. So uh, I had some intro music. Got to pull out the Hulk Hogan voice. But basically, we we took characters from movies or video games or literature or whatever, and based Anywhere. on that, yeah, based on that character, based on that character, and and who that character is supposed to be, we kind of created a, a Dungeons and Dragons like fifth edition class of of this character, and then we would let them fight to the death, and. Yeah. It just didn't pan out well on audio only, but I've been getting some feedback that we should try it again now that we're streaming. So since that we're gonna sense. we're gonna try to start doing this thing every week, I thought you know maybe and you and I've kind of talked about maybe still doing a movie every week because that's that's kind of our thing, but then yeah. alternating the geek question and the multiverse mayhem thing. So we got some we got well, some only background work is, to the do with that. Multiverse mayhem can really last a while when you think about it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, we we would have to change our rules because before we put put them in a uh, an arena, and you know when we put them in an arena, and you're faster than I am, I could never catch up to you to actually do anything. So that's what took so long. Cause I just chased you around the arena. We just have True. to stand toe to toe. So anyway, now now to be fair, at one point you you're freaking Attila the Hun, and and you basically killed me in two hits. Well, you were Felicity Smoke. I mean, come on. It was Genghis. It was Genghis Khan versus. Uh, no, it wasn't. I tell the hunt. It was Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan Genghis versus Khan. versus Felicity Smoke. So you know, it wasn't much of a battle. You're right. But we we picked those at random. So anyway, true. Um, so we're thinking about doing that and kind of mixing it up a little bit. But we're always going to go back to our uh, um, our just regular random movies. And so really, we do something this this thing called Roll for Credits, where we just literally roll dice to pick a random movie and watch it and review it. So uh, I guess my question to you, Connor, is do you want to do the movie first or do you want to do the geek question first? Because I got answers for both of them. I would rather do the question. All the, right. the movie thing is gonna is at the very end. You know? Sure, that's fine. All right. All right. All right. So, so what's the geek what's the geek question? The geek question is I am always in charge of the geek question and it's always amazing. <laughs> Klaus. <laughs> I, I love that weird dude from from Umbrella Academy. Klaus is the bomb when you think Klaus, about it. Klaus is the bomb. He and number was it number five? Yeah, they're my yeah, favorite. Number five. I mean, I mean, I love. I could take. I could take. Character. I could take or leave the rest of them, but the, the two of them, I like. I they mean, just need. To, they need to have a, like a buddy cop show, just the two of them. That'd be hilarious. I mean, like a spinoff buddy cop I mean, show with the two of them. Just it's the fact of a freaking preteen looking kid. Talking smack and having having the crotchety, um, senile, well, not senile, but the rudeness of, of an old guy and just coming out of that kid's mouth. It, it's priceless every time. <laughs> well, the, the fact of the matter is we just chased that big chicken. So uh, let's get back to what we were doing. So what's a, the geek a, question? Um, a time-traveling, teleporting, mutated chicken. Let's get back to the geek question. What's the geek question? Anyway, man? yes. The geek question is... If you could choose to to teleport and live in any type of, of literary world, where would it be and why? All right. Do you want to go first or do you want me to go first? Yes, I want to go first. I kind of figured you did. Go for it. Now, now, Dad thought he knew the answer to, to this question. Mm-hmm. And he, you thought um, you knew the answer guessed, to mine. He guessed all my classics, Harry Potter, Percy Jackson, Aragon, all that jazz. Yep. But it's none of them, actually. That's weird. It it's actually Star Wars because Star because was not Star Wars a book. Star Wars was a series of books. Uh, was it not? You know what? I'm not sure if it was a series of books before it was a movie. I can't remember if the books came from the movies. Look it up the real movies. quick. I, you look it up. I got plenty okay. of things going in front of my screen, so you, you can look it up. And hey, and stealth, stealth might stealth might know. I don't know. So okay, so so why why the Star Wars world? Because it's Star Wars, you dingus. I mean, think about it, Hit him. If if you can't become a Jedi, okay, that's you can che- become a smuggler. That's a cheesy. That's you know? a cheesy answer. Just because it's Star Wars, give me. Tell me more. Tell me more. Um. Basically, in Star Wars, 
everyone has the has the opportunity to become great. Yeah. Every, everyone has the possibility to to be part of a, a to, to be part of a crew, to be part of a mission, to, to be part of a goal, you know? Mm-hmm. No matter where you are in the world, whether um whether whether you're in the hub of Coruscant or or all the way in the outer rim, you have the opportunity to do something great. Sure. And that's what I've only that's what I've always loved about Star Wars, you know, because it was literally anyone in anyone in the entire galaxy could um could become part of this either this either this amazing ancient order of people who who control matter in a way and and wield lightning swords and protect the peace. Yeah. Or or or, or you or you could travel the stars with with a group of ragtag people and commit semi illegal crimes while well, well, at the same time also helping people if you want you know right kind of like kind of the guardians of the galaxy okay so see stealth, stealth must have looked it up for us because he says a book called star wars from the adventures of luke skywalker six months before the first movie six mo- so <laughs> i knew it so see i knew they were kind of close but i could never remember which came first so I'm, I'm i'm kind of a big picture guy not so much the detail guy <laughs> <laughs> so anyway okay so star wars because and look i mean your ultimate goal your dream is to eventually be an author be a published author yeah. and write books that's, yeah, that's definitely and all the stories that you've ever written as many as i can think of of the stories you've written in the book that you wrote is, is an underdog stories it's an underdog story it's somebody that that rises from nothing or doesn't know that there's something and becomes something i mean that's just kind of the the underlying theme of all of your stories because so so of course wanted to happen to me right so know? of course star wars would would play right into that i mean you, you i mean look at luke look at ray i mean you know it's the same kind of thing so luke ray anakin all the skywalkers yeah yeah so um so okay so that's pretty cool uh is that all you got to say about it though just just that um, okay, let's see. That and Wookiees. What? What do you mean, that and uh, Wookiees? <laughs> I I could have a freaking giant walking pile of muscly fur who only speaks in roars and grunts to be my best friend. Tell um um tell me tell me that the very first second you, you saw you saw Chewbacca, uh, you you didn't want that thing as a best friend. Tell me you didn't think that when you first saw him. Nope, I didn't. I mean, he's okay, but I th- I was when I saw. How am I related to you? Hey, how hey, how hey. am I related to this man? <laughs> you are the fruit of my loins. So <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, look with Star Wars. When I saw Star Wars, I was what like the first one came out in what seventy seven, I think. And so I, I was so, yes. so I was nine years old. Okay, so robots were really cool. You know, so R two D two was my oh, thing. Oh, so you wanted so you wanted R two D two? Yeah, because that was kind of the age I was at when I saw what it the if, first time. What about the Ewoks? Could not stand the Ewoks. They were annoying. They were like the Pogs or whatever the whatever those things were in the oh new, my God, they new were trilogy. Like the Pogs. <laughs> Couldn't stand Ex- them, man. Except, except no one ate the Ewoks. Or wait, what did <laughs> you, the Ewoks? Eat? You don't know that. We never it, see anybody eat them. Uh, do they you were, think the um? Uh, do you think the Ewoks, the meat, the um, the like meat pygmy the, that they served in the movie, you know, the meat that they served in the movie during the big feast at the end. Do you think they ate themselves like they ate their own dead? I don't know. <laughs> it's not. It's not an uncommon practice. Because I'm in the well, animal kingdom. It's not. So, look, I mean, okay, maybe. Maybe they did. I don't know. But I did not like the Ewoks. I I thought they were annoying. I thought the Pogs or what Pogs, Polywogs, whatever they were, I thought those were, you know, did not like those. Uh, so, Stel's talking about where he'd like to live, a uh, series huh. of books by Deborah Hartness. So, that's cool. Oh, uh, I'll have to oh check. Yeah, I, I, you I, probably have heard of them. I haven't heard those. Yeah, I'm sure oh, yeah, you have. Yeah. Um, um, it's um, it's something I've been wanting to read actually. Cool. And, you know, once once they get the money and can afford this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Bills. Yeah. I mean, bills are going to get me kind of strapped this month. 
Well, because it's just a brand new job. It's going to take a while to build up your, your income. So, But anyway, um, all right, so Star Wars. I, and look, I think Star Wars is kind of cool. Um, of course, I love sci-fi, but I think I've always been more fascinated about wanting to live in magic, you know? Uh, so Stealth, I mean, I mean, I'm okay with the audio books, but at the same time... I'm the guy who likes a classic physical book in my hand, you know, mm -hmm. everyone else in my family and even Nikki likes, likes Kindles and nope. digital books and audio nope. books. And I'm like, Nope, I need a physical book in my hand. Not true. I, and dad, I know you, I know you like, you like physical books too. Yep. Yep. I just, I, they just read better to me than a, than a, exactly. The string, so. But okay. So I, I mean, Star Wars is cool. That'd be cool to have a lightsaber and all that stuff flying through space but i've always been more fascinated with like magic you know so uh, even though i love sci-fi um magic is where i would be going so you guessed where i i mean you took a guess where i would be right yeah and you're yeah, wrong mordor. why would i want to live in mordor no sorry um <laughs> What's what's the name let me, of the general let me country go, where they are? Let me go live in hell. Uh, Middle Earth. The, <laughs> Middle uh, Earth. Middle Earth. That's, I could have swore it, it was something different. No. And I, it's Middle I, Earth. I, I thought, okay, Middle Earth. That That's the whole land of Lord of the Rings is Middle Earth. So, yes, while Lord of the Rings is my favorite book series of all time, I've read it multiple times, Love the movies. I'll sit and watch them sometimes, just back to back to back. Except The Hobbit. Uh, no, I love the book, The Hobbit. I did not like the movies because they stretched one small book into three big movies. And so they had to put a bunch of filler in there that had nothing the to Hobbit do with The Hobbit is small? The Hobbit, the the Hobbit, Hobbit is... Hobbit. Yeah, The Hobbit book is very small. It's very short. Compared to the other... Compared to the Lord of the Rings trilogy, they're very short. Yes. So, anyway. All right. But... Do you, do, you, do you have any other guess? Because I'm guessing you won't. And I'm shocked by this series. I went and looked it up on Wikipedia just to get a little bit more background um, at just how many books are in this series. So, can, I've um, talked about it before. I, can, I, can I ask questions to, to finite my guess? Sure. I'm out of, I, um, I'm, my drink's out, so you better hurry. Was it a series that's been written in the last 20 years? It's a series that started f 42 years ago and is still going. It is still is going. It, is it a comic book? No. no. You know I'm not a big that's comic guy because I don't know where to start with comics because there's so many different storylines. Huh. I had you read one of them. I had to read the first book in the series. Oh, man. I had Mitch read the first um, book in the series to try to get some other fans. Castle Rugna. No, that was that was the third book, or was that the second book? No, but um, the same series, right? The same yeah. Yeah. universe. Yeah. Is um is that the one you're talking about? Yep, Xanth. <laughs> I knew it. Yep, Xanth. Yeah. So Xanth was a series of books. Is a series of books written by a guy named Piers Anthony, and so there you go, Piers Anthony. So that's that's where his the name came from, Xanth. You know, the last name of his first name. I mean, the last part of his first name, the first part of his last name. And you know, it's actually um, if you look at a map of Xanth, it's actually a map of Florida because <laughs> he lives in Florida. Um, oh my gosh. And so the premise of the Xanth books is it's this magical land. And everybody has a magical ability. Some people have magical abilities that are so powerful that they're wizards and they're warlocks and you know they're they're like the super powerful people in the land. And some people may have a magical ability that they can make the paint on the wall change colors. It could be a stupid magical ability, but they have some magical ability. And if you didn't have a magical ability, if you couldn't demonstrate your magic ability by the time you were 18, you were exiled from the land of Xanth. And the first book is called A Spell for Chameleon, and the main character is this guy named Bink. B-I-N-K. And he can't demonstrate a, a magical power. Now, I'm not going to go into the storylines of all these kind of things, but it starts there. And so there's magic, 
it is super funny, but it's it's like middle school potty humor funny. It's not it's there's a lot of sexual undertones, but it's kind of middle school sexual undertones. It never gets too serious. It's kind of kind of innocent in its risqueness, if you know what I mean. And there is it, a very fun twist ending though. Yeah, well, I'm not going to ruin it because it is a great twist ending. I know. Ending I just wanted book. to say that. But um, the other thing about this, th- these books is they're full of puns, and and when I say puns, the puns are a real thing. So like, you know, a moat uh, around uh, a magic castle is full of allegories. And so there are these animals that look kind of like alligators, but they're made up of words. I mean, they, they literally, the, the puns become, are in real life. And so you've got magic, you've got humor, kind of my style of humor, kind of stupid, silly humor. And you've got, basically, it's full of dad jokes because it's puns. I mean, what what about that doesn't be make it the perfect place for me to live? Dad jokes, puns, and stupid humor, and throwing yeah, some real magic quick, in real quick. So, so hold on. So, so why wouldn't I want to live in a place like that? I mean, that's a perfect place for True. me to live. So, uh, and here's the thing about the Zant series. I went to look it up. The first book, Spell for Chameleon, was written in 1977, 42 years mm-hmm. ago. The um, let's see, the 42nd, 42nd book in the series, came out in 2019. The 43rd is coming out this year, and he has three other books, 44th, 45th, and 46th in the series that are forthcoming. So this, there's 40-something books in this series, and they're not just like little kind of kids' books in a series. They're like books, and they're novels. And, and it, the cool thing is it starts with Bink, and it kind of follows his family line for generations. So... It's just kind of cool. And I think I got... How far did I get? Isn't, uh, isn't the next book book about his, about his kid and, um, and he has the ability to talk to dead things, right? I think so. But uh, let's see. I think the farthest I got... Um, did I read? I think the 19th book was as far as I got. And that was 1995. And then, of course, you know, I'm in college, and no, at that point, I'd been married. <laughs> I'd been married and was... I was one year away from being born. Right. And so, the next book came out in 1996. You were born in 1996. No wonder I stopped reading. <laughs> I had, I was a, all I had a kid. You needed. I had a kid. So, so anyway, I was when I saw that, I was blown away that I'd actually read that many books in the series, and that they're more than twice that many in in the series. So it would be cool to have a box set of the whole thing, but it would probably cost a few hundred dollars even though they're small books <laughs> just because there's so many nope. of them. So okay, so nope what was your question? Self. So what was your question? Sorry, I interrupted you. Um, didn't let you finish your question. Um um I, I was going to ask ask um um you told me about this book a while ago about um, um, I'm about about this guy who uses classic rock songs to cast spells. Yes, I was thinking about that again. Of the Xanth series? No, it is not. And I was thinking about that oh, again the it. other day because I asked about it on the Discord, and somebody was uh, answered my question and was able to give me the name of the book. And I thought I told you what it was, and now I've forgotten it. So I'll have to be the, I'll have to be the guy that asked the question again, and the person that answered will have to answer it again, and <laughs> we'll have to go from there. So and I'm gonna want that book. I want. I need to read that book. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, it. Yeah, it was fun. It was fun read. But good grief, it was high school when I read it, and that was. I graduated in 1986, so that was how many years ago? Judas Priest. I can't even count that high anymore. So, anyway, so that's that's my book. That's where I would live. I'd live in Xanth. Although, it's like magical Florida. And Florida is like, I don't know, man. There's weird stuff happens in Florida. Stuff that would only happen in Florida America's happens in Florida. Hole. <laughs> well, I, I I didn't say that. No, all you Florida people that live in Florida, it's an interesting place to live. I'll put it that way. I did not call you the glory hole of 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 the United States. Sorry, that was not a me. guy. Literally got high off bath salts and um and then tried to make it with a goat and then killed that goat because it rejected him. 
Mm. Yeah, you should have watched uh, Horseshoes and Hand Grenades Thursday night and heard the article of the lady in Florida. Okay, so Sorry, guys, um, what's up? Uh, you need to go watch uh, this week's uh, episode of Horseshoes and Hand Grenades and let listen to the article about the lady in Florida and what she did in a store oh. designed for certain adult entertainment. And it happened in Florida, which made sense. I thought, I thought you were talking about the people who... Um, who um, who wore swaths, took up bandanas for masks in a Walmart, and they were banned from all Walmarts in, in the world. No, I have no idea which one. I haven't oh. seen that one, so no, no. This was much well, more. Happened. This was much more interesting than that. <laughs> Just oh. I, I, I don't know if I don't know if Self was in on that stream the other night or not, but oh. um, you need to check it out. So, okay, what do you, uh, so that's mine. Mine is Xanth. Cause it's just it's it's a, it's it's a magical land of dad humor. I I gotta read that. I I gotta get that series. I gotta. I mean, magical dad jokes. Come on. And and let's be honest. I am your son. Dad humor is also my humor. So anyway, so that's so. If you've never read the Xanth series, go check it out. At least read the first Zanth. book. Xanth. X A N T A N T H. Yep. So. They're they're good. They're they're simple. They're they're funny. Um, they're kind of you know at least early on they're kind of written at a young adult middle school kind of humor level, and that's okay. Uh, they're just good. They're funny. Um, and there's some recurring characters that that go last through several books at a time. So anyway, it's just really kind of cool that they follow a family all the way through, starting with Bink, the very first character. Um, all dad jokes are magical. I believe that, Mr. Bones. I All believe. dad jokes are magical. That's right, Mitch. That's right. Absolutely, dude. So, um, all right. Do you want, what, what do you want to do, man? You want to do our movie? I'm not looking forward to this, but you kind of are, I guess. I Whatever, yeah. man. I, I enjoyed the movie. I don't know what you're yeah. talking about. Okay, well, I'll start our, we'll start our, our roll for credit segment. All right, here we go. So, just delay on the music. Oh, let me pull up the deets on it. All right, so the movie we're reviewing this time is the 1989 movie, A Chorus of Disapproval. And, oh, yes. And that name could not be more appropriate for my opinion about this movie because my opinions about this movie are a chorus of disapproval. Um, <laughs> it is a... Comedy British movie. It's, it's a British movie, kind of a comedy musical, uh, starring Anthony Hopkins and Jeremy Irons. And you'd think, oh my gosh, Academy Award winning, you know, Sir Anthony Hopkins, he's been knighted by the Queen. You think, okay, this would be good. No, no, it's 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 not. <laughs> yes, a course of disapproval is <laughs> oh the name God. of your sex tape, Mitch. <laughs> Absolutely, yes, it is. That's that, that's yeah, that's that's what I'm. <laughs> That's what I've heard. So, uh, <laughs> so do do you want to start and talk about the movie? I, you just watched it again, right? You just watched it again, yeah. so it's fresher on your mind than it is mine. So, if you want to talk about the plot, why don't you talk about the plot a little bit? Because I'll just I'm just going to kind of so, talk about what I didn't think was good about it. So, so the basic plot of the movie is is, is our main character Guy Jones. Is getting over the um the uh, the passing of his wife. So it's, and that's Jeremy meet, Irons. That's but Jeremy Irons yeah. plays the main character. So, so he travels to to, to this nice quaint and coastal town. The name does escape me. Ah, yeah. whatever. It's some place in Wales, um, and, right? And, I think it's Wales. Yeah, and um and so basically he's trying to settle into this new life he has there. You know, mm -hmm, he's. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, and so one day he realizes he's getting kind of lonely, getting kind of bored. So, so he picks up the newspaper and he sees an ad for, for this acting company called the beggars opera looking for some, some actors, you know, and, and what they, and what they're looking for are actors, they're doing like an operatic musical, 
I forgot yeah. what the, and I think it was called the beggars the beggars whatever. I think that was the name of the play yeah. actually. Oh, okay. So, now all right, just to give you an idea, this is like small town community theater that happens to be musical theater. So, Mitch, just imagine was it like Horizon Theaters, what used to be the Painted Rock Players in in the Valley, you know, that it's kind of like that, but it's set in Britain and they sing opera or at least try to. Um, so imagine, so imagine if the Horizon Theater in in the Valley was trying to do opera. That there you go. So um, anyway, so so yes. Uh, so that's plot that. Continues that continues right? on. So so the plot continues on, and and Guy Jones eventually he um, meets um meets this cast of actors. He uh, he meets the director David Abluelen. Whatever. That's 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 Anthony Hopkins. He's the director. Mm-hmm. And um, and, you know, some his, his character is the director of this troupe of of actors, and and so they start getting close. You know, you know, they're buddies, they're pals, and um, and then as it goes on, we um we we then meet David's wife, Hannah, and and as soon as um Guy and Hannah meet eyes you notice an instant kind of attraction you know just just the way, the way they interact with each one other problem that I, yeah which was one problem i had but anyway, i'll get to that i'll get to my mini problems in a minute and <laughs> and so and so as you can obviously tell eventually this turns in, into a sword affair just sword ah. affair it, it is it is kind of forced. It just kind of randomly happens. I I do agree with you on that. Yeah. So anyway. So yeah. So th- that happens. Um, it continues on. <laughs> okay. Um, um, yeah. it, um, I'll shut up now. Um. Uh, the, the movie continues on, and um. And the company he that guy works for is um is trying to buy this piece of land next to their factory. You know, just trying to expand, and then Daffod. And this other guy, Ian Hubbard, who, who's also part of the acting troupe, is trying to get this land, you know, because um, be, um, be, uh, because one's trying to sell it, one's trying to use it for their own company and all this jazz. And they are both trying to convince and bribe Guy to give them the inside scoop of this, of what his company is offering to pay for the land so, so they can either under or over their offer to possibly get the land. Um, this then turns into a sort of quid pro quo, uncomfortable sort of thing between Guy, Daffod, and then Ian. With Ian, it gets even more awkward and a bit more interesting because Ian, Ian then, okay. um, then has his wife, Faye, sleep with guy and now, then they get into a an, an affair right so and, um, and, and so now so now guy is having an affair with both hannah and Faye, and, right and so he's trying to juggle these two women okay so and so and, um, and i'm just watching this movie and i'm like this guy cannot keep it in his pants i mean come on dude okay so um we're going to try to move on because I don't want us to fall in this trap of telling every single thing scene scene by scene by scene like we've done before. So, so yeah, so this guy, he's this mild mannered dude. He gets transferred to this little small town and (laughs) players got to play. And so he gets transferred to this small town. He's bored. He's a widower. His wife died recently. And so he thinks that this musical thinker might be something interesting to do. And the second he walks in, all the women are, looking at him and like, ooh, a new man, you know, kind of stuff. And so he meets Daffid's, however you pronounce his name, uh, his wife, Hannah. Daffid. And, and that, that affair starts to happen. I think David, but with an F. Yeah, Daffid. but so it felt forced because it felt like just all of a sudden, oh, we're going to have an affair. And there was no time put in developing that connection between the two of them. And so that <laughs> happened, and it was more like, he kind of loved her, uh, had feelings for her, but then the other girl was the hot girl that the husband basically pawned her off to him to try to manipulate him to give him information on this land. And so here's this mild-mannered dude, mild-mannered widower, all of a sudden getting attention from all these women, and all these women wanting to sleep with him. And so he's like, cool. It's like building up his ego, and he's enjoying both. He ends up going out and having, at one point, there's a scene where he ends up having lunch with both of them at the same time. 
and they both know that they're having an affair with him, and it's just it was just weird. So to to be fair, here the scene started with this is him and Hannah quietly trying to discuss this, and Faye just randomly barges in. You know, right, right, right. So so you know that's going on, but you know, and I will say I will say that the storyline was kind of good in in that. It kind of showed this guy that was starving for attention and starving for something to do and kind of getting sucked into these relationships that he kind of got caught into. Um, the Hannah one was a little bit more purposeful, but the other one the other one was just he kind of got manipulated into that. And then here, all of a sudden there's this guy getting all this attention, and he's got this friendship with this man that whose wife he's sleeping with, and it all comes out in the end and comes crashing down and he ends up losing all of it all of his friendships everything and you know through the course of the movie he ends up getting the starring role in the show and he fulfills that and does great in the show and then everybody's ignoring him because they all found out everything that's going on and he just kind of walks out of the theater by himself lonely after all that stuff. And it was kind of this poignant thing of like, you know what? We all need attention. But if you go about it in inappropriate ways, it's usually going to come back and bite you in the ass. And I think that's what happened to him. And so that's, that part of the storyline. Of course, the truth will set you free. That, that part, part of the storyline I, I enjoyed because it kind of taught something, right? But Yeah. All good musicals teach a lesson. But the movie itself... <laughs> Do you, tell me what you liked about it, and I'll just end with what I don't like about it, because I'll, 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 you know, yeah. <laughs> well, well, let's see. Um, I'm honestly, yeah, I always love, uh, um, I always love the trope of of actors playing actors, you know, mm -hmm. well, because the um because then then these people have to act bad acting on purpose, you know, and I I, I find that very humorous, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, and, and, and um, I get that. I get that. But there and there's there's a and I saw it a little bit differently and I'll explain, but I mean I I want to give you your time. So it's it's like Matt LeBlanc and Friends, you know? He's well, an actor playing an actor who's bad at acting. You know, it's 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 a funny thing. Yeah, it's true, but there again, there's a difference that I saw between this movie and some other ones. Um I thought that the acting in this one was just pretty bad, period. I don't and and because you didn't see them acting really until kind of the end of the movie, right? Um, I mean, we're talking scenes in the hotel, scenes in the bar, scenes, you know, we're just living life, just playing their characters. I thought the acting was just bad. Uh, I, I thought Anthony Hopkins' character, um, he was hard to watch, you know? He was kind of bipolar. He, um, um, it's almost like, like at one time, he, yes, that um, was the genius of Joey Mitch. So, yeah, you know, but so here's the thing. To me, yes, you got community theater, you've got small, you know, small town theater, and, you know, this, this, the trope of that is, the, you know, they think they're good actors, but they're not really good. Uh, but, and I get why you're trying to go with that, but I thought the acting was just bad in general. Some of the characters, the people that were acting those roles were just bad. They just weren't very good. So that's one thing I didn't like about it. If you want, if you want to see a movie that's almost the same kind of thing of small town community theater that's really bad and the actors are really good at portraying people that are acting really bad, go see Waiting for Guffman. Waiting for Guffman is wedding, fantastic. Waiting for Whatman? Waiting for Guffman. We have it here. We've watched it a bunch of times. You just never watched it. It's a Christopher Guest movie. Now, Christopher Guest movies are the ones that like do like documentary style movies, like This Is Spinal Tap, Best oh. in Show, Waiting for Government, and so Waiting for Government is one of the first ones he did after Spinal Tap, where it's like community theater, and he has the same troupe of actors playing all these characters in all these different movies, and it's fan freaking tastic. It is absolutely hilarious, and that that is what this movie could have been, but it just you had these big name actors that just, in my opinion, didn't pull it off. So that was one thing I didn't like about it. So if you want something that kind of does that, shows good actors being good at being bad, 
go see Waiting for Guffman, one of the Christopher Guest movies. So, but the other thing I didn't like about it was whenever I've watched like a BBC show, um, you know, from from England, it just seems like a series of scenes and these small little set pieces, small little rooms and small little set pieces. And that's what this felt like. This felt like just a series of scenes and these tiny little set pieces. Um, and it, it almost felt like a small TV show that just ran long. And so it didn't feel like a movie. It didn't have a grand scale to it at all, like I feel when I see a good movie. Um, but I just was surprised to see Anthony Hopkins and Jeremy Irons. I mean, they did okay in their roles. I just thought they were bad roles. You know? Mm. So, I mean, if I'm going to watch a musical, I, I, I want it to be good because I'm not a big fan of musicals. So, it's got to be good. To be fair, I, I don't I don't consider this to be a musical. No, I don't I either. I consider it to be I guess um, because be, uh, because in my opinion, a musical is something like Whoa, like what? a filler on the roof Whoa. when um when they're actually going out and dancing and singing. You know, like it's normal. I don't know behavior. what happened there. My my screen what? keeps changing. My screen keeps changing. What is it doing? So, it keeps going back to stream starting. Hold on. That's maybe, weird. It's, maybe it's my USB mouse is causing it to happen. So I don't know what's going on there. So I took that out. Screw that. So hopefully okay. we're fixed. Man, I hate the whole stream thing. Golly, it <laughs> drives me crazy sometimes. But okay. So anyway, you were saying what? Is it fixing it? Yes, yeah, it's, it's it done. Fixed? It's fixed. It's fixed. All right. So, uh, what? Hello. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. I was looking at I was looking at my phone, which which is picking up the stream, and I was like, like, wait, it keeps on changing again, you know? Yeah, because you're Sorry. yeah. Don't Sorry, watch the stream because it's up delayed. I'm on <laughs> delay. Yeah. Um, but this... but anyway, um, um, in my opinion, a musical is something like like a fiddler on the roof when they're actually going mm-hmm. out and singing and dancing as themselves about yep. th- about the situations they're yep. in, yep. like it's normal behavior. This the this, this this was more like um. A movie with music in it. Right, right. It, I know? mean, it was in the musical category, but you're absolutely right. It was not a musical. It was, it was a comedy centered around doing a musical, which is exactly what um, Waiting for Guffman is. It's a comedy centered around doing a musical. But I mean, you know, if you want to jump down a Christopher Guest rabbit hole, I'll jump down that that rabbit hole. I mean, this is Spinal Tap, Waiting for Guffman. Best in Show, A Mighty Wind. Uh, there's another one. Now, there's another one called uh, For Your Consideration. It was okay. Uh, Mascots. Get on Netflix. There's a Netflix original called Mascots, and it's a Christopher Guest movie with some of the same characters, some of the same actors playing the same characters from Waiting for Guffman, and they're at like a, a college sports um mascot competition. And is my screen frozen, or are you just acting like you're asleep? Please All don't right. do that. Come on. You're just acting like you're asleep. You're being goofy. No, I, yeah, you are. You weren't falling asleep right in the middle of the stream. You weren't falling asleep right in the middle of the for stream. The past month, um, for, for the past month, I've been going to bed between 8 and 9 o'clock. Dad. Well, then, old man, then I should we should finish this up so you can go to bed. <laughs> I've got at least four or five hours of gaming in front of me. So oh, Shut off. I, I, yeah, no. So, if you need to go get your beauty rest, old man. Oh, shut up. <laughs> it, it's... it's it's not my fault. Fault that my job that my job needs me to get up at freaking four a.m. every day. I know, but then you get home earlier too. So true. So, you, so your your hours are just shifted to the left. Is all you get up earlier, you go to bed earlier. Same thing. Yeah. So, but tonight keeps you up later than normal. So anyway, <sighs> is there anything else you wanted to say about this movie? Um. Let's see. I um overall i did enjoy the movie uh, which even surprised a, me yeah um if um even though i don't have a lot good to say about the movie i still enjoyed it i don't know why i just did you know oh well, you're weird like um, that yeah that's true um i um i didn't like like how how it wasn't actually a musical i, I was expecting dancing and singing like, like yeah. a real musical yeah that, i was hoping that, that there was gonna be that yeah me yeah yeah same here um um, I did not like David Ad Llewellyn's character. He was kind no. of all over the place. He um yeah. he was yeah. didn't like him at all. Kind 
whispering and everything. Literally the very next second, he was screaming at this one guy, telling him he's a waste of space and tearing up his script. Yep. You know, it was just, it was like, okay, wait, I thought this was a fun guy who was just a little bit eccentric. No, no, this guy's just a, a bipolar dick bag. You know, he's just, he's a, <laughs> he's a bad guy. Yeah, that a bipolar dick bag. <laughs> Maybe that should be the name of my sex tape, bipolar dick bag. <laughs> but you're not bipolar. I'm just kidding, Connor's going for the joke. These are the jokes, man. It's the dad um, joke day. Um, let's see. Um, I I also f- felt like the affair scene and fair arc with with Hannah was kind of forced. You know, it's like it was all. It's, I, I thought a lot of like, it. Um, most of it was like forced. She, she had this moment of weakness and she kissed him during rehearsal. Right, and that kiss right. turned into a torrid, heated. Affair where affair where they were literally going at each other in cars and trying and, yeah. and finding secret places to meet up. It's like how they literally met only one time before that. I know, but it was kind of no sense. The one thing I thought was interesting is you know usually when you see a movie about people having an affair, it's usually hot people having hot sex and a hot affair, this kind of stuff. And they're like two of the most mild mannered, normal, boring looking people you've ever seen. <laughs> Going at it, and I just thought I thought that was kind of a weird. Well, to be to be fair, the most normal people are, are always the most twisted. Now, my question would be: they, How do you know that? They just. Where do you get your evidence? Oh, well, I've got plenty. <laughs> I don't want to know that. Thank you very much. I prefer hey, you to know keep I'm just joking with you. Right? I prefer to These keep my. Jokes, man. I prefer to keep my opinions of my son as innocent as possible. So anyway, um, I, I I could turn that bad or turn that around real quick, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> okay. So anyway, uh, what? So did you have uh, any thing you didn't like about the movie? I didn't or did I couldn't tell. What you didn't said. didn't things that you didn't like I, about the movie? That's all I've been saying was stuff I didn't like about the movie. I I, I know. L- listening is a skill, Dad. Come on. I, I know. I'm looking at five different screens right now, so, and so I'm sorry. Literally a shrink. Listening is is in your job description. Yeah, but when Come I'm listening, on. when I'm listening to somebody in a, in a in a session, I'm looking at them and listening only to them. I'm not checking uh, our sound effects and our D- Discord chat and our stream and Twitch. I'm not checking all these things at the same time. I'm not streaming my my therapy sessions and checking the the chat room <laughs> as we're having a therapy session. So anyway, um, um, it was it was. I wouldn't recommend overall, seeing I, it. I would give it a five out of ten. I don't know if I'd give it that. I would. I mean, if you are really, if you're a fan of watching any movie Anthony Hopkins has ever done, okay, fine, maybe. Or Jeremy Irons, fine, maybe. Um, but I didn't find I didn't find it good. I didn't think the acting was good. The singing wasn't good, which of course the singing wasn't really supposed to be good because of community theater. Um, I I just did not think it was a good movie, and it just goes to show you that even people that have been knighted by the Queen for their contributions to the arts can have clunkers, because this was definitely a clunker in my opinion. So if you yeah. if you're dead set on seeing something like this, go for it. I would not recommend it. Um, so anyway, that's just that's just my opinion. Uh, we need to get going. I'm getting hot in this garage. so Same here. <laughs> so how about we roll for the next movie and see what's next? All right, you got it. All, All right. right. So first we get a D20, and we roll t- to see if it's either Netflix or Amazon, wh- wh- where we watch our movie. Mm-hmm. High is Netflix, low is Amazon, right. as is in life, because, um, because Netflix is always better than Amazon. Mm-hmm. All right. We got a 13. So that would be Netflix. All right. Right, and then we roll a D10 to determine the genre of the movie. All right. Come on. Give me something good. Give me anime. Anime. Come on. Come on. Six. What is that? Six is uh, crime. Ah, oh, dang it. Come on. It, it, it's, it's sort of to ask for anime every once in a while. Come on. All right. All right, so it's crime. Now let's roll to see the number in the list of that genre. 31. All right, so I'm going to go look at the crime listing on Netflix and see what we got. And I will be back in just a minute. All right. All right. 
All right, so the 31st movie in the crime section of Netflix is... Swordfish. Sword what? Swordfish. Let me look it up on IMDb here. Is it, um, um, it, it, um, is, isn't that a Leota movie? No. Or a Travolta movie? Travolta. So it's a, 2000, okay. it's a 2001 movie starring John Travolta, Halle Berry, and Hugh Jackman. So it's got a pretty good cast. Hugh uh, Jackman, yeah, Wolverine, and, yeah. Of course, I mean, cool. good grief! This was twenty years ago, so they're all younger. Um, and uh, let's see, it says a covert counterterrorist. Oh, what, 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 what happened? What happened to my screen? Don't do that. Come back, son of a. There we go. Uh, a covert counterterrorist unit called okay. Black Cell. Um, uh, <laughs> Mitch is just saying boobs. boobs. <laughs> um, is is that referring to Halle Berry? I think so. If I because I I think I've seen this movie a long time ago, and I I do distinctly remember that there is a bikini scene. I think I don't know that there's more to it than that. But anyway, so so anyway, a covert counterterrorist unit called Black Cell, led by Gabriel Shear, Gabriel Shear, uh, wants the money to help finance their war against international terrorism. But it's all locked away. Gabriel brings in convicted hacker Stanley Johnson to help him. So, <laughs> he just said Halle Berry got paid a handsome sum of money to be in Swordfish. Hmm. So, um, yeah, so we'll see what happens. It may be one of those movies where we have certain scenes that we fast forward through, you know, if we're trying to keep it fam family friendly. So, um, Isn't she also in John Wick, or am I thinking of someone else? Oh, yeah, she was in John Wick 3. Yeah. That's her. Oh yeah, That's uh, she she was just in the she third was the, one. The uh, dog girl, right? The 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 dog woman. <laughs> I don't know that I'd call her the dog. I would call her the the very beautiful woman that has dogs. Let's put it that way. That sounds okay. better than the dog lady. <laughs> the Crazy beautiful assassin. The beautiful assassin that has killer dogs. That sounds cool. Much better than the dog lady, or the crazy the, cat lady. The, the, the crazy That's, dog lady, see, not the crazy cat let's lady. See, now that, to me, that would be funny if they had like a crazy cat lady in, you know, in the bar in the Continental downstairs where all the assassins hang out, and there was a crazy cat lady, and she killed people with cats. That would be funny. That would be weird. Uh, how like, would that even work? I don't know. Ask Catwoman. They, I don't know. If you if you they look would at, get clawed. To, if you to death look by tiny little claws. I guess, man. The death by a thousand cuts. There you go. See. So anyway, okay. Um, this was kind of a this was kind of a bizarre episode because of all the technical difficulties we kept having. Yeah. Um, but uh, so uh, one of these days I'm gonna get a a, 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 a stream deck and Sound solve board. solve these problems here. And so yeah. if anybody wants to donate to to the Gene Pool Variety Hour stream deck fund, we should start a Patreon, dude. You and I should start a Patreon. <laughs> I know that. We have to have people that, that watch us on a consistent basis that, that would want to do that, to pay, to watch us, to, to have a Patreon. But it's on the list at some point. Um, but anyway, so yeah, that, that's that's on my list, and hopefully that'll solve our sound problems, just get a stream deck and try to avoid this other stuff. Dean Claude Van Damme. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is one of that's the funniest. clever. That's one of the funniest things I've heard all day, Mitch. That was great. So anyway, okay. Um, that's all I've got. You got anything else you want to yeah, talk about before we go? Too. All right. So uh, no. I'm so good. so the plan is that we're going to start doing this every Friday night, not every other Friday. So we should be back next Friday at eight o'clock, and uh, we'll be right here, same same uh, bat channel, uh, same bat time. Um, and if you listen to this from the podcast and my condolences, I mean, thank you, um, you know, and you want to leave a review anywhere you're listening to the podcast, that's great. That's what helps people out to, to, to see us do. and listen we to us. We are desperate. We are like desperate. No, I'm, I I'm, not, my I'm not. No, I'm not desperate. I have internal joy. I don't need external validation, although it would be nice, but I don't need it. So, <laughs> but the, the, the podcast could use it. So. Leave us a five star review wherever you listen to the podcast. Um, you know, like us here uh, on Twitch. This this also goes up on our YouTube channel. You can go watch it there, like Definitely. it there, and uh, we'll go from there. So, if you want to reach me, if you want to reach the podcast, podcast is on uh, Twitch. I mean, on Twitter at GP Variety Hour. You can also reach oh, yeah. me on, on Twitter at Head Gamer uh, or on uh, Xbox Live at, at Head Gamer. 
And Connor, where are you at? You um you can find me practically everywhere on on Twitch, Twitter, her um and um Xbox, and now also right back on TikTok. <laughs> TikTok Yay. is here and is here to stay. Okay. All all as Quillmeister, capital Q, capital M, and that's Meister spelled with an I E, not E I. So if you spell it wrong, you spell it right. Right. So thanks for coming in and, and hanging out with us. I appreciate you guys coming in and chatting Oops. with us. That gives us some, somebody else to talk to besides this guy I'm looking at. And <laughs> uh, we will see you guys next week on the June Pool Variety Hour. And remember, stay nerdy, my friends. All right. And I'm trying to, get the, trying to get our music going. Where's our outro music? I need our outro music. Where is I it? need to dance. Come on, come on, give it to me, give it to me. It's that's what she said. Oh, I walked right into that one. You did, and our music won't play. Oh, dang there it. we go. Now you can dance, dance, gesture, dance. <laughs> and Mitch, I'll see you on Xbox Live in about. Five minutes. As soon as I get another drink. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Oh, yeah. Dance. Do it. Power. All right, guys. We'll see you guys later. Y'all have a good one. Peace out. Bye, guys.